You'll find a rather amazing uh, similarity. You see, although they couldn't talk to each other anymore, they did all carry the same religion with them everywhere. Now, they had different names for their gods and goddesses, got different languages, but basically the same system of evolutionary religion carried everywhere, polytheistic, evolutionary, humanistic pantheism everywhere. And the source of all this was apparently the Babylonian cosmogony, which I guess Nimrod had learned, and I think probably learned it from the devil. If you can think of a better explanation, okay, but that's the best I can come up with. And that cosmogony was the Enoma Elish, which said that originally there was nothing but a watery chaos everywhere, and out of this watery chaos, two gods just appeared, and from them, everything else came. And you find the same thing in Egypt, you find the same thing in Hesiod, and in uh, many of the African tribes and the American Indian tribes, the, the idea of a primeval chaos, none of them tell where the creation, the, the universe came from, all start with the universe in a chaotic condition, usually a watery chaos. Now then, uh, how come that? Well, that immediately makes you think of Genesis, of course, where in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And then the Spirit of God began to move in the presence of the waters, and God said, let there be light. Well, initially, there was a watery, not chaos, but, but uh, just water everywhere. It wasn't chaos. It was all perfect for God's, uh, that, that particular stage of God's creative work. But uh, God created the angels as well as human beings. Angels were created first, probably on the first day of creation. And Satan was the highest of all the angels, we read in Ezekiel 28. He was perfect in his ways and full of wisdom and perfect in brightness and beauty until iniquity was found in him. And God says, I'm going to cast you to the earth. Everything was very good at the end of the six days of creation. So it was after that that he was cast to the earth. And then he tempted Adam and Eve. And apparently with the same temptation that he had tempted himself with. He said, I want to exalt my throne above the stars of God. I want to be God. I want to ascend above the Most High. He said, I'll be like the Most High. In other words, he thinks he's of the same order as God is. Where would he get that idea? Well, when he first came into existence, all he knew was God told him that he had created him for a great purpose. But all he could see was this watery chaos around him. That's where he was when he was created. And all the other angels the same way. And so he thought, well, he was of the same order as God, perhaps, and just a matter of uh, priority of time, and maybe he could uh, successfully rebel and become God himself, or like God at least. And so he, at that time, initiated his long war against God. And the best explanation he could, if, you see, if he's going to believe that God isn't really the creator, then he has to have some other explanation for where they all came from. That's why I have to say that Satan was the first evolutionist. Now, I know evolutionists sort of ridiculed me for saying that. But again, if you can think of a better explanation for how this worldwide age-long lie came to be than through the father of liars, which is the devil, well, I'm open to hear it, but <laughs> that's the best I can do. And uh, Satan, therefore, uh, of all things, he's the deceiver of the whole world, but he's deceived himself most of all. And he still thinks, apparently, because he's still fighting against God, he still thinks somehow he's going to win. And so he keeps on fighting. And he has to use the same lie with which he deceived himself, and that is that the universe is the ultimate reality, and the universe is evolving itself into higher and higher systems, and now we can control that. We can develop human beings and other things the way we want them now in the future. If he can just get control of everything, well, of course, we who believe the Bible know that's not the way it's going to end out, but that's the way it is right now. And it looks like he's, he's getting control pretty rapidly. But you know, it does say that we are wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. And therefore, to fight this war, we don't fight it with bullets or even with ballots. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal weapons, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and bringing into captivity every thought, and same word as mind, bringing into captivity everybody's mind to the obedience of Christ, the Creator and Savior. And that's what our commission is. Uh, to fight that war, it's a spiritual battle. And so therefore we have to have, on our, have a girdle of truth and a breastplate of righteousness and a helmet of salvation and feet shod with the gospel of peace and shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and then in, in, in all in a shield and great aura of 
prayer. But then we, the weapons are powerful and mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And you read in the book of Revelation how it's all going to work out. <laughs> there it says that all the kings of the world one day are going to give their allegiance to the great humanist man who gives his allegiance to Satan. They're all going to worship the beast who gave, and they're going to worship the dragon that gave his power to the beast. The whole world is going to become Satanist then. And then it says all the kings of the earth are going to give their power to him, but, and they're all going to make war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will overcome them because he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So it's going to be a lot better to be with him than with them in that day. Okay, thank you. For your free information pack, including a catalog of creation materials, contact the Institute for Creation Research. Write Post Office Box 2667, El Cajon, California, 920.